Well, welcome, welcome back. So for those of you who have been following me for a while, you might remember that a little bit ago I did a poll on my community tab about whether y'all would be interested in seeing me do some sort of more informational videos about traditional cultural dolls. <laughs> and to my pleasant surprise, a lot of you guys seemed like you would be interested in the idea. The most popular vote as of the time when I started researching for this was for Japanese Kokeshi dolls, so that's what we're going to be looking into today. Like I said, this was a while ago that I did this poll. I would have had this video out way sooner, but as per usual, a ton of dolls all released at once, and so the review videos kind of happened and this just kept getting pushed back, but we're here now and that's what's important. I am going to be linking in the description box down below the sources that I used for the research for this video, as well as all of the photo credits. Also, I'm sorry in advance if I mispronounce anything. I am doing my best, but I can't promise that I'll be perfect. So, with that being said, the first question is probably, what exactly are Kokeshi? In a very broad, general definition, Kokeshi are limbless dolls made from wood. From there, they can vary greatly in terms of size, shape, level of detail, and paint style. There's a lot of different kinds. There is a little bit of murkiness about the history of Kokeshi dolls, but they seem to have originated in the Tohoku region in the late Edo period, which lasted from 1603 to 1868. So most people would say that around 1800 to 1868 is sometime where the Kokeshi dolls would have originated. The Tohoku region is known for its hot springs and would attract tourists seeking to relax there. People known as Kijishi, who were woodworkers that were also skilled in pottery, kind of cross-talented, would make Kokeshi dolls on a lathe. Most people agree that the Kokeshi were originally made to be souvenirs for the tourists to the hot springs, though there is some suggestion that they began as toys for children. Some people have even theorized that they could have started out as talismans related to miscarriage, child loss, fertility, or the harvest. So needless to say, that's a lot of possible origins, but as I said, hot spring souvenirs is the most prevalent theory. Regardless of the exact way Kokeshi started to be produced, they did indeed take hold as both children's toys and souvenirs, and so the practice of making them spread and became more popular as time went on. While they attracted children and also some collectors in Japan, which allowed artisans to hone their craft and focus on just making the dolls instead of it being a side practice, Kokeshi were heavily impacted by World War II. Post-war, when the United States was occupying Japan, there became an increased demand for Kokeshi in the States and just in general in other Western countries. More people then began to craft the Kokeshi using more modern lathes as opposed to the traditional kick lathes. Increased demand and then increased product quickly spread Kokeshi and now they are known kind of all around the world. There are two umbrella groups of Kokeshi, traditional and modern, also known as creative. There is a very, very distinct difference between the two types of Kokeshi, so that's an important thing to note. Traditional Kokeshi are crafted by master artisans and often the methods of making these have been passed down in families for generations and generations. There are either 11 or 12 officially recognized traditional Kokeshi styles. My sources didn't quite agree on that, but most people said it was 11. <laughs> each one though is native to a different area and each is super distinct from the others to those who know what they're looking for. As a whole, traditional Kokeshi tend to have painted on details and be simple in shape with just cylindrical bodies and rounder heads. As the term traditional implies, they are more true to the original designs of the first Kokeshi dolls. These types of dolls tend to be more well liked among Japanese collectors and also have the cultural significance as it being an art form that has been passed down through time. So traditional Kokeshi dolls are more than just dolls, they are a representation of that culture and they're important culturally. Creative Kokeshi, on the other hand, can cater more towards Western audiences and have much, much looser interpretations on the basic design. With these Kokeshi, you might find more carved details as opposed to painted details. You might find more colors or designs that are less traditional and more inspired by Western cultures. There are even some Kokeshi based on modern franchises. Creative Kokeshi also might be more mass produced as opposed to the handcrafted traditional styles, as evidenced by the fact that you can simply look them up on Amazon. <laughs> These Kokeshi tend to be more popular with so-called Japanophiles, as well as people who value the cute factor over historical significance, or even just collectors who like the look of them. This isn't to say that creative Kokeshi are worth less, just that they tend to cater to different audiences than the traditional Kokeshi. Of course, there can definitely be overlap and you can love both. Interestingly, Kokeshi as a whole tend to be aimed more at adult fans than children nowadays, 
With technological advances and more detailed dolls that are available for play, not as many children gravitate towards Kokeshi as toys. Still, the practice does live on, it's a form of respected craft, and also Kokeshi are still popular as collectibles like I said. If you're ever in Japan and want to learn more about these dolls, there is a museum at the base of Mount Zao called the Miyagi Zao Kokeshi Museum, aptly named. And that museum has a huge, like, 5,000 plus collection of Kokeshi. So if it's something that you're interested in, definitely, if you're ever in Japan, that's where you should be heading. So yeah, guys, that is kind of the history and the basics of Kokeshi dolls. Obviously, they've been around since approximately the 1800s, which means that there is a lot of history there, a lot of cultural significance. So if you wanted to, you could definitely find more information. Obviously, like I said, there's the museum in Japan that I'm sure could tell you a lot more if you can travel there, but also some deeper digging online. I'm sure there's more things to find out, but that's just kind of a brief introduction and explanation of Kokeshi dolls. I hope that you guys liked this kind of video. It is definitely different from the reviews and like modern stuff that I usually do, but I thought it was really fascinating to learn about these dolls and I would love to do another one. So if you guys did like it, please let me know down in the comments below if you'd like to see another one. In the poll that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I think that the second most popular option was Russian nesting dolls. So if you do enjoy this one, I'll probably tackle those next. Also, if you have any suggestions of cultural dolls that I should look into, please let me know down below because if you guys like this enough, I would love to make this a series and I'd love to be able to look into as many cultures as I can. So yeah, I hope that you had fun exploring Kokeshi dolls with me today. I hope that you have a lovely rest of your day or your night or whatever it might be and I'll catch you next week in the next video. Bye guys!